Welcome to the Age of Asparagus, here to show you a more advanced method of controlling the behavior of your tablet's express keys using the Xset Wacom tool. The most immediate need we have for this is to allow our tablet buttons to use modifier keys like Shift and Control. Shift and Control are both extremely important in Krita and many other programs. Holding Shift and Control or both while using any of the tools in Krita, Gimp, Blender, or Inkscape and many others will almost always modify the behavior of the tool in some way. Here's where we left off last time. I set these express keys using the nice visual graphics tablet settings, but these settings don't currently have support for the modifier keys Shift, Control, and Alt. You can see if I try to set the keystroke to Control or Alt, let's say for button 6, if I attempt to set it to Control or Alt or Shift, it doesn't recognize it. You can see the keys I'm pressing down here. However, if I set it to something like Shift A, that will work. To set our express keys to the modifier keys, we're going to be adding to the bash script we created when we disabled touch sensitivity. First, let's open the terminal and get our list of devices again using the xset wacom ah, xset wacom program let's list our devices and I'm using an Intuos 5 Touch M and recall that these five devices here are all part of that one physical tablet that I have plugged in. Before we can set a button we need to know how the buttons are numbered which unfortunately is not straightforward. Your tablet buttons probably won't have the same numbers as they did when we used the graphics tablet settings. Let's try a test. I'm just going to try to set button 1, my top express key, to number 1 on my keyboard. To do that, I'm going to run the Xset Wacom program again, and I'm going to set, this time I want the pad device, so I'm going to copy that, and remember we want to put this in quotes. We can highlight to copy and middle click to paste or call. So I'm going to set button 1 to, in quotes, key 1. Key 1 indicates the number 1 key on the keyboard. If I hit enter, it should be registered. Now, if you get an error, it's probably because something like this, you just have a typo. So just make sure that you've spelt your device's name properly. Okay, so now I'm going to hit the top key on my keypad. And you might have seen a little flash there. That's actually my show on screen help, which popped up on my other monitor. So my number one key is not doing what it was supposed to do. It is still show on screen help. So now we need to go through each of the buttons and determine which is actually the number one key according to X at Wacom. So if I hit two, nothing happens. Three, nothing happens. Four, it's still gonna switch my monitor. Yep. Five, nothing. Six, nothing. Seven, E, which makes sense because I have seven mapped to E. And eight, no. Okay, so I don't have a button one. Actually, you know what? Let's try hitting that touch ring, the button in the middle of the touch ring. Oh, and there it is, look at that. I'm hitting the touch ring and it's registering as a one. Okay, we found button number one. How about button number two? So I'm gonna hit up to get this command back and let's change button two to enter key two. All right, so now let's start at top again. Let's go button one. Oh, there we go, all right. So we know that this is button one, and we know that this is button two, according to Xset Wacom. So how about number three? Let's try that. I'm not gonna go through all of them. However, we are gonna hit a little hiccup here, which you need to know about. So I'm gonna hit number three, and I'm gonna go down my keypad, hit number, obviously we know it's not that one, that is number two, and let's try this one. There we go, number three. So now I know. So now I know that that's number three. Okay, why was I doing, why do I keep doing this? Because if I try to set button number four to four, I get an error, it turns out. 
that buttons four, five, six, and seven are reserved by another tool and I can't use them for my tablet. This will be the case for some tablets. You'll need to check yourself how your buttons are labeled. Note that if you get up into buttons 10 or higher and you want the button to send two digits, you need to add a space between them because there is no 10 key on your keyboard. So if I want to go check out what's button 10 do, you need to go like that. And now, if I hit button 10, if I remember which one it is on my tablet, that wasn't it. There we go. It'll type properly. So, after mapping all of my keys, figuring out where they are with this method, turns out this is how the keys are mapped for my tablet. Note that we just overwrote all the settings we wanted before. However, thankfully, the keys we just mapped using the XSET Wacom tool won't persist after we log out. So once you know how all your buttons are labeled, log out, back in again, and we can continue. But for now, I'm just going to carry on. So if you've logged in again, let's, uh, let's get our XSET Wacom devices list. So we can do some copying and pasting. Now I want to set my 10 key, my express key, which Xset Wacom thinks is number 10, to the shift button and the 11 key to the control button. So let's do this. Xset Wacom pad, I'm going to change button 10 to key shift. Let's make this a little bigger here. Now, when I hold this sh button 10, you should see, oops, that was button 12, wasn't it? Button 10 will recognize as shift, as you can see down here, when I hit my button 10, it is registering shift, and I can test it in Krita by holding key number 10 and clicking and dragging, and that's what Krita does with the shift key by default, is change your brush size if you click and hold it, drag, Right, big brush, click, drag, left, little brush. Let's do the same thing for control. Back up into my console, my terminal, and this time I'm going to change 11 to the control key. Let's see if that worked. I will now try button 11, and when I click it, you see the control key is registered, and in Krita, the control key is picks up a quick color picker. So I can change my brush to red, for example. If you followed along with me in that previous tutorial where we turned off touch, you should find your script by going to your home directory, and in that bin folder we created, you're going to see the Xset Wacom script. If I double click it, it's going to ask me to run it. I'm going to hit display so I can start to edit it. Above my command there to turn touch on, I must have been playing around with that, touch off, I'm going to add a comment by adding the hash symbol and typing touch there. And so now we're going to have another section here for the express keys. The easiest way to do this is just copy these commands, which we've already tested, and they know they work, and middle clicking there, I'm going to plop them right into my script. I can save that, and now, since this script is already running when we log in, it should happen automatically. Now, if you're having troubles with it, these kicking in when you log in, you can also just double click the script and hit run in a terminal and that will trigger all the settings. Note that unfortunately the keys we set using Xset Wacom, the shift and control won't be shown on your on-screen help, but for now this is how we have to do it if we want to map modifier keys to our tablet. Finally, if you're interested in getting into more nitty-gritty of Xset Wacom customization, you can check out their page, which I'll link to in the video description, which has all sorts of additional options here, including how to set the global pressure curve. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.